Japan, the hosts have named their squad for the Rugby World Cup. Uh, it's an interesting squad. I'm not familiar with as many of these guys as I should be. I've seen a lot of these guys playing for the Sunwolves uh, here in Super Rugby. I've seen the Imbiber, who is a YouTuber based in Japan, does a lot of rugby content, has also done a video on the Japan squad. So I will link to that one because I'm sure he's got more details on the squad than I do. I'm about to go watch that video uh, as soon as I'm done here. Uh, the Japan squad will inevitably come in for a bit of, I guess, criticism for for having a bunch of non-Japan born players. Um, and it's a funny one that Japan seems to get targeted with that a wee bit more than other countries. Like, um, I think Scotland's proportion of, of non-local born players is pretty high. Uh, and, I mean, the UK is a funny one in that you know, you can move around freely within the UK, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, Japan seems to cop it a bit more than everybody else. Like nobody really talks about the fact that guys like Sebi Reese wasn't born in New Zealand. Uh, Christian Liliofano plays for the Wallabies, was born in New Zealand. Um, the English get a wee bit with the Vunipolas, but Japan especially seems to cop it. But um, I feel like a lot of these guys, like Mokiola... He's been in Japan since he was like 15. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of leave that one to the side for now. But I'm just saying that's probably going to be a thing as we get closer to the tournament. Especially if they can do well, uh, people will start to say it's all because of their, their imported players. Anyway, this has started on a bit of a rant. I'm going to move on. Uh, the squad. Three hookers in Horie, uh, Kitare, and Sakate. Horie is the main guy who I've... Um, uh, seen playing because he's played a fair bit of Super Rugby, so um, he's he's a, a pretty solid player. Uh, back when I used to play Fantasy, he would always be on my bench because he was always a reliable guy. I played a fair few minutes and got through some tackles and whatnot. So um, yeah, I expect to see a fair bit of him. Uh, five props in Inagaki, Ku, uh, Kizu, Ivalu, and Nakajima. Again, a bit of a Sunwolves connection with uh, a lot of these guys. Inagaki is class. Uh, Jiwon Ku. Uh, I think he's Korean born, but again, he's another one who people won't probably talk about him very much being not Japanese because he still looks, I mean, he's Korean, so he, he looks close enough that people probably won't bat an eyelid, but someone like uh, Moaki or they probably will. Anyway, um, Locks got Thompson, who is older than me. I think he's 34. I actually wrote that down somewhere. Bear with me a second. Yeah, Thompson is 38, <clears throat> which makes him older than me. One of the few players at the Rugby World Cup who is older than me. Uh, I guess you can call him a veteran. Uh, Fundervolt, Hilu, and more. Uh, I guess the main thing that concerns me a wee bit about the Japanese in the second row is uh, the lack of proper... Whoa, someone just fell down. That was a marker. Uh, lack of proper tall timber. I looked up the heights of these guys. Uh, Luke Thompson, six foot five or 195 centimeters. Hilu and Moore are 194 and 195. And Van der Valt, it's more like a loose forward lock at 187. So <clears throat> it's a pity they don't have some taller, taller guys in the second row. Like you like to have at least one guy who clearly cracks two meters. But um, yeah. That's, that's not going to happen. So they'll have to be inventive with their line-out plays anyway. But I mean, then again, like, I mean, you look at Ireland, they use Omahani in the, uh, the line-out a lot. Kieran Reid jumps line-out a lot for New Zealand. So it's not all about just the tall timber, but it would be nice to have that option. Loose forwards, Tui, uh, Tokunaga, Leach is the captain, uh, Labaskakni, uh, Jimeno, and Mafi. It's a, it's a pretty good looking back row. It's probably one of their strongest areas, you'd have to say. Uh, I mean, Tokunaga is a workhorse. Leech, he kind of, I mean, he's been injured, so it's hard to say. A couple of years ago, he was definitely one of the top guys in the world. Uh, but I'm not sure if he's still quite there now. Uh, Labaskakni has always been a tackling machine, even back when he played for the Cheetahs. Uh, Mafi is a ball-running madman. It's good that he's still made the team, even though he's got some legal stuff uh, kind of pending. He's still been cleared to play, so... Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing him with ball in hand. Uh, three scrum halves in Shigeno, Tanaka, and Nagare. Nagare seemed to get the nod uh, a wee bit more for the Sunwolves anyway in Super Rugby. Uh, Tanaka is, is the veteran, but um, he may see limited minutes. I guess we'll see which way Jamie Joseph goes. 
Uh, Tamura will probably, I assume, from what I've seen him play, uh, be the number one 10. Uh, but Matsuda is an option there as well. Uh, Lafaele, Nakamura and Tupo. Uh, I think Yamanaka can play a bit of uh, midfield as well. But again, I'm kind of stretching my Japan knowledge here. Uh, Lafaele is a good player. Um, so I would expect to see him starting, but again, I'll defer to those who know a wee bit more about Japan rugby. Uh, Fukuoka, Moakiola, Lameki, Matsushima, and Yamanaka uh, round out the rest of the squad. Fukuoka is lightning. He's uh, very agile and uh, just an amazing player to watch with ball in hand. He's a fairly handy defender as well. Uh, Moakiola has uh, been playing for the Chiefs, hence the Chiefs jersey here. Um, very good player as well. I think he lit the world up kind of at, like, was it under 20s? Um, but he's uh, been very good as well. Lemeki is also very good ball in hand, dangerous. Uh, Matsushima's defensively not the best player, but, um, yeah, he's, he's got a solid skill set around as well. So, yeah, it's an interesting looking squad. There's pretty high expectations of these guys. Like, the schedule has been set up pretty favorably for the Japanese and you can do that as the organizer like they've got a, a nice gap between them and that final game against Scotland they start their run against Russia which is kind of a nice way to ease your way into the competition though disrespect to Russia but they are kind of uh, expected to be bottom of that pool so uh, they give themselves a nice gap uh, to, to play Scotland in that final game and Scotland have only got like I think four days so it's uh it's it's going to be an interesting one for Japan. Uh, I look forward to seeing how they go. They've never made it out of the pool at Rugby World Cup before, so hosting it, this is uh, this is their time to perhaps get it done. They've done well in the Pacific Nations Cup, so like I said, the expectations are... They're not... I don't think the expectations are that they will make it out of the pool, but there's a hope that they'll at least be competitive to try and make it out of the pool. So they were unlucky at the last Rugby World Cup in that they managed to get uh, three wins and a loss, which is usually good enough for second, but there were three teams in that pool that all had three wins and a loss. So uh, I think it was South Africa, Scotland, and Japan. So, so uh, Japan didn't go through based on bonus points. So uh, yeah, pretty pretty unlucky for them. So they've been close in the past. So I guess at home, uh, we'll have to wait and see. You guys let me know your thoughts. Any insights on the Japan squad, greatly appreciate it. I'm going to go check out the Imbibers video. I will put it in the description because I'm sure he will have more to say uh, being based in Japan. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.